this is Nia Fallon. I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology Message. This time we're going to talk about October from the 1st of October until the 18th or 19th of October. This is where I talk about all zodiac signs and how we are all affected by the energy in the skies. And what a fluctuating and intense energy are we experiencing this October 2022. Uh, we begin October with a day, the 1st of October, that is apt for, you know, overindulgence, doing things too far, too soon, too strongly, too widely, without really thinking about the realistic implications of how logistically, energetically, financially, you know, time-wise, these are all going to be put down and, and, and done. This is a day that would be much better attended to and, and, and worked through if we keep it real, if we keep it realistic and, and, and if we let our humility guide the way. In the sky, Mercury planet of communication, still in retrograde, is uh, opposing Neptune and all of that energy, that Neptunian energy can make uncertainty r raise its ugly head again uh, conspiracy theories not knowing what the truth is not knowing where i should be heading not knowing what i should be thinking at the moment things become blurry and this is actually an amazing time a wonderful time creatively and artistically and spiritually you know we could connect to spirit we could connect to the muses we could connect uh, uh, to the realms uh, that Neptune dominates but when it comes to realistically um, planning my life it's a bit harder with all this mystery around. furthermore Venus planet of relationships and a monetary and uh, a materialistic satisfaction is opposing Jupiter it's an amazing time to enlarge the Venusian qualities but it is a time that again we are apt for overindulgence overspending trying to enlarge our business too much or trying to enlarge our stomachs too much or our wardrobes ro wardrobes excuse me so this is a time that again if we keep it real and we keep our humility in check we are going to experience the better most positive aspects of this configuration. The square between Saturn and Uranus is going to be there all through the months. And it's about this titan fight between the system and the new. The need for an upgrade and the relationship between the people and the rulers. And the constant struggle between reality as we knew it and the brave new world, the brave new Aquarian age that we are stepping into. On October 6th, Mercury is going to trine Pluto, the transformator. And when Mercury trines Pluto, things get unveiled, things get uncovered. We understand things that have been hidden from our eyes before. This could be on a political level, this could be on a personal level with our relationships or deals that we have made and contracts that we have made. And definitely this is a, thing, a time of revelations regarding our understanding of the truth, as it is. What we do need to be careful from is not being too direct when we are talking and communicating things that are sensitive. To the other side because this is a time that could be a bit too dramatic or cause drama if we're not careful uh, on the 9th of October we are having a full moon in the sign of Aries conjunct the wounded healer Chiron and it at that time there is a kite in the sky composed of a great air trine and the full moon in Chiron the Grand Air Trine is composed by the planet of male energy, uh, uh, Mars, and the old teacher and judge, 
Saturn, and the king. Uh, the sun conjunct Venus. Venus is in the sign of Libra, ruling the sun very strong there, heading into its star point, turning from a morning to an evening st uh, uh, star. Very important time for Venus. And these days of conjunction to the sun, of uh, meeting with the king, if you will, are an amazing day for a bit of attunement and, and ceremony, thinking where it is we want to be regarding love in our lives and relationships and our relationship with our body and our senses and money and material goods. The exact day of the Sun conjunct uh, Venus is on the 19th. Back to the 9th. On the 9th we're having this grand air trine in the sky together with the full moon forming a kite. A time of a lot of understanding and a broadening of our cerebral abilities and mental capacity. This could be on a general level on a public level, on a political level, and this could be regarding our own personal lives. On both level do, levels does this uh, um, amplification and widening work of the Grand Air Trine uh, happens. And not only does it happen now, it is happening in a way that could f prove beautiful and beneficial and loving with this conjunction between uh, Venus and the Sun. We're having a trine between the planet of male energy and the old judge, allowing them to work in a strategic way together. The energy required, given by Mars, the strategic thinking and, and resilience and, and maturity provided by Saturn, the energy provided by the Sun, the love and, and satisfaction provided by Venus. It's really a beautiful, beautiful composition in the sky, but this is a full moon in Aries. We're talking about feelings, not thoughts. We're talking about the feeling of a need to go forward. We're talking about an impulse. And my suggestion to you is when you feel this impulse, and many times because it is conjunct Chiron, it could be an impulse that is driven by post-trauma or pain or a feeling of lack, of sensitivity, of incapability. Before you actually go through the action, let Saturn help you plan it through. And again, keep it real. Don't keep it, don't, don't exaggerate. Don't think you're omnipotent. And therefore, we could really achieve great things through this time. Um, Mars is going to square Neptune on the 9th as well and when Mars square Neptune again it's an amazing time for um, people dealing with spirit dealing with art dealing with creativity the, the, the you know if you will babies brought into this world could be amazing spirit children you know in that sense like if I'm an artist I could produce the most beautiful creation at this time because I can really converse with the muses but as a person this also can raise feelings of incapability of me being just a small drop in a wide ocean not really affecting the currents and this is an illusion that can lead us to self-destructive um, mechanisms in our personality or you know sometimes needing to just disconnect from reality by using drugs or alcohol or things like that so we need to watch these feelings of um, martyrdom the feelings of uh, uh, being the victim and not act out of victim mentality at this time the Sun is going to try in Saturn on the 11th which already brings us the power to you know, buckle up and put our chin up, take the, the responsibility on our shoulders and look forward to the horizon and start walking. This is a time that we can take responsibility, we can be mature and we can definitely have the energy we need to erect 
a stronger base and skeleton that we could live or build our life around over the next period. So that shrine is very helpful in bringing us the power that we need to deal with everything else in the sky. Mercury on the 12th is going back to uh, uh, opposition with Jupiter. We talked about it two weeks ago. I warned you from verbal diarrhea and saying things in a way or at a time that later on proves uh, not so useful. So again, I'm warning you off this, but I am saying this is also a time that you could widen the people who know you and about you, your social networks or sign deals that are beneficial. Um, on the 17th, we're having Sun trine Mars and Venus trine Mars because they're conjunct. This could be an amazing time when it comes to physical energy, when it comes to the joie de vivre, the enjoyment of life, the enjoyment of being in one, in a body, in a physical world, with senses, with food, with drink, with feelings, with smell, you know, and just being alive. This is also a time that if we are in a relationship, we could really enjoy it. We could really enjoy each other, we can enjoy each other sexually, and we can enjoy life. This is a, a, a good time in that sense and full of energy, full of energy and all that energy, don't get it locked up, okay? Don't let it pile up and then, uh, you know, lose in other more, you know, or less positive ways than depicted before. Um, as I said on the 19th, we're having the exact conjunction between Venus and the Sun, great day for ceremony and the sun is going to square Pluto and Venus is squaring Pluto so it is also a time of great changes in our relationships with ourselves with others with money with our self-esteem and body and the way we provide ourselves with material goods this is a time that if we, there, there are things that have been lurking in the back and ignored for a while they can jump up to the surface then the changes become more radical and dramatic and less pleasant, you know. So my suggestion to you, if there are any Venusian things that need to be upgraded, changed, taken care of, you have time before the 19th to actually start taking care of them right now. So when we get to the 19th, drama will not prevail. This is about everything I had to say. I want to remind you, that uh, if you want a private reading with me, a private lesson or a course, you could reach me through the details at the end of this video. I want to thank you for sharing this. I want to thank you for viewing this. I want to thank you for staying with me so long today without any makeup on. This is Nia Filer. May we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.